November 5th is finally here. Not only is today election day, but it's also when candidates start taking down campaign signs. Locals around town call these signs a necessary evil. While freedom of speech is important, campaign signs inevitably transform neighborhood street corners into eyesores. Did it seem like there were more political signs around town than other years? Well, there were. With 109 freeholders, advisory votes, roving signs, and a massive billboard, our streets seemed cluttered. So, we talked to a sign maker, a sign installer, and a candidate about the science behind signs. My name is John Hallinan, uh, known in the local area as the sign guy. It's a straight volunteer job. It's quite rewarding to know that you can do this by yourself, especially at, uh, at my young age. <laughs> What's my passion for being involved in politics? I don't know. <laughs> There are places where we have huge clusters of signs out there. It's just, it's a big conglomeration and nobody really looks at anything when you've got signs all that close together. People are usually driving fast enough that they don't pay attention to what the signs say. So that's the reason I separate our signs from everybody else's. Signs uh, have to be positioned uh, in a place that's uh, a good location for sight and also legal. Each city has its own political sign rules, but most share these common elements. Signs can't impair the vision of vehicles or pedestrians. You can't place signs on private property without permission. And signs must be removed in a short window after the election. Candidates must sign a volunteer compliance form saying they will pick up the signs. And lastly, Washington state law says that signs have to be 32 square feet or smaller. Garrett Delano started his own sign printing business last June, called Dunlap Printing. 30% of Dunlap's business is printing local political signs. But how effective are static signs in a world of interactive social media and TV ads? Everybody has a different communication language. As soon as you realize that everybody communicates in different methods or uh, in different forms, you realize that signs are only one aspect of the marketing portion of a campaign. Uh, the whole point during the course of a campaign is to touch the voter seven times. And that means with a sign, with a phone call, with a uh, mail piece, whatever you, whatever you choose to do. I, I think that the signs uh, still have a, a an extremely good value. And the signs are a great way to get uh, name recognition. Uh, social media, you actually have to you know, crank up your computer or do your phone or whatever. And uh, if you want to spend your life doing that, why? Well, I guess that's great, but you know, most people like to go outside once in a while, so. Liz Pike serves in the Washington State House of Representatives and is also running for a Clark County freeholder position this year. It's my opinion that the signs are designed to educate voters who, uh, quite frankly, don't take the time to become informed. Um, they're not going to do their homework on who they should vote for. For me, it's more powerful that a landowner is willing to put my sign on their property because it means that they support me, they support my position. I know that my sign is not going to be crowded with other candidates because most candidates don't go to the trouble of getting those sign locations. Here's Garrett Delano again. I'd say the sign climate this year is very tumultuous. There's, there's, people are very impassioned about the topics that they're uh, getting involved in. They're making handmade, hand-colored signs, and it shows to me that it is a very much a grassroots effort. So when I see that, it really makes me glad because that means these people are getting involved in these topics and they're getting knowledgeable and they're fighting for what they believe is right. On the same note, with the whole overall escalation of the climate this year, we have bad eggs. 
We have people going around bending down signs. We have people going around and spray painting on other signs. Unfortunately, when they go out and destroy things like that, it really hurts everybody. Again, Representative Liz Pike. It happens every election season, and everybody thinks that only their signs are being tampered with. I lose a full, uh, at least half of my signs. So people just steal them. When the sign tips over uh, 60 degrees from standing straight up, the force on that sign is half of what the steady state wind is. So if you've got a, if you get a 30 knot wind, then you've only got 15 knots of force trying to push the sign over any further. So if you go out there and you see a sign that's bent over 90 degrees like this, uh, it wasn't the wind. Reject any kind of notion that it's okay to mess with the opponent's sign. Um, I just think it's really important for the candidates to make that real clear to their supporters. We are not going to touch our opponent's signs, and you know they've got a right just like we do to put their signs up. Using a service called What the Font, we were able to find this year's most widely used typefaces. It's important to realize that there's a connection between the font and what's being said. So your message gives you a certain idea and you want to have a font that creates the emotion, the emotion to go with that idea. Some signs use fonts popularized by national campaigns and some take a completely new approach to standing out from the crowd. You know, the most important thing is your name and your slogan and your website on a sign. If people like and share your logo, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's like free internet advertising. What makes a good sign is contrast, something that can be remembered while at the same time being very easy to read. Even though there is no way to truly quantify the impact that political signs have, it's safe to say that they aren't going away anytime soon.